welcome to another edition of the buyer's guide thank you so much for all the messages i've been getting about this series so far it's a few weeks since i've uploaded a video in this series but i've been getting loads of messages and i've still got loads and loads and loads of ground bait mixes and different baits to feature for you right here on youtube in this series now a few days ago i posted a video on youtube and it was just basically a feeder session at a very well northern venue southfield reservoir and one of the key features to that actual video was how I was featuring a ground bait mix that I know that a lot of you didn't really know about. It's a Boland mix and it was a Brazen mix and if you haven't seen that video it is a, a full session video I'll put the link just there for you and underneath this video. So because I've had so many messages about the Boland range of ground baits I thought I would make the next one in the series a Boland mix as well. Now this one's going to be slightly different from the other one. The other one, as the name suggests, is Brasm. It's the Bream Brasm mix. That's what's in the featured video. In this video, I'm going to be looking at another mix, which is called Roach Black. Now, as the name suggests, it is for targeting roach and silverfish, and it is a dark mix. And I know that's what a lot of you are into, certainly at the back end of the year and through the winter months when water clarity is a little bit, um, a little bit clearer. So I'm going to be testing mixing it up I'm going to be showing you what feed values in these this particular mix I'm also going to be doing some tank tests as well so we can see how it performs underwater I am introducing two new tests as well which I haven't featured in the other videos in this series one is I'm going to be sieving it out the ground bait as well just to have a look at what kind of feed value is involved in the mix and when I do the tank test I'm actually going to be doing two tests both at the same time one feeder will have the mix in its dry state and the other feeder will have the ground bait in in a slightly damper, wetter kind of a state. We're going to look at them side by side in the tank so we can see how they both perform under water. So the mix that we're looking at is Roach Black and there we go, just like the rest of the ground baits in the Boland range, they are three kilo bags so they're very very good value wise at the end of the video i will go through with you how you can get hold of these ground mates and what the cost is and everything but they're three kilo bags as you can see and they're a polish brand okay so what you will see is a lot of polish writing actually on the ground bait itself if we just pop this camera on for you we can have a look at the packaging now like i say it's a three kilo bag it is got a lot of polish writing on there that's expected but here clearly labeled is roach black now the reason why i'm making a big point of that is because there are a couple of different roach mixes in this range now this is the black one there is another one it's the roach coriander and i've been told that that is the best selling mix when you mix that up it's slightly redder than this mix and hopefully that's one that i'm going to get a chance to feature later on in this series so this is the roach black as with a lot of ground baits these days it's got a picture of a fish on there that the mix is actually intended for and that's a lovely big roach okay this is actually saying you get one kilo gratis so you're getting one kilo free i'm not quite sure how that stems into things but this is a three kilo bag clearly marked on there the weight of the bag and we have got a window in the packaging there which has given us a great insight into how fine the mix is and how dark it is as well if we flip the packaging over most of this or a lot of it is in polish okay so we've got a lot of polish there we've got some english script here which it is i'll read that out to you i know you can watch this bike in fast running waters or deep deeper than four meters add ball and glue and carry clay or gravel to the ground bait to make it heavier that's something that we do a lot of anyway and it's just telling you you can um, add particles to this feed as well and I have been told that this mix can mix quite sticky so it could be ideal for for carrying lots of particles and we'll see a little bit more of that in a moment when we start mixing it up we've just got a pictorial storyboard there of how to mix it just the best practice way of mixing it and as regards the actual dates we do have a couple of dates on here now this particular mix I've had for almost a year now so this is you know it's not as fresh as it can be but if you can just see there it has got a date of production on there and it's also got um, I'm assuming that's a best best before date or use by date which is 2021 which is quite a few months away and we've got another little window on the back again just showing us how dark the mix is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up now, get it into the bowl, but I'm also going to put it through a sieve initially, just so we can have a look at what kind of ingredients are in this and just have a look at how fine it is as well. 
So with three kilo bags, the great thing is obviously you're getting value for money. So I'm just going to open this steadily because with a three kilo bag, if you don't open it properly, a word of warning, if it splits down the side, it can get a bit messy. Okay, so let's get the ball. Put the camera back in place for you. Now, just to give you an idea of scale of the sieve, I know a lot of you uh, are into that sort of thing. There are lots of different sieve grades and sizes of holes in grout. You know, some um, some of these sieves are designed for pinkies, some are designed for maggots, and as you can imagine, there are different mills um, as regards the actual holes in this sieve. Yeah, so let's just tip some of this. That's right, okay. We're getting that sense of hemp. We know there's a lot of hemp in here. I've been told by the manufacturer that there is, you know, a lot of this mix is hemp, and that's obviously as you'd expect. What you would expect to see in a roach mix. So let's pop this through the sieve. Now this is a new feature to this series. I've never done this before. Let's pop that down there out of the way. Okay, lovely dark mix as you can see, and it is pretty fine. There's all sorts in there. We can see the hemp in there. I've been told that the other ingredient in here is it's just very fine dark crumb as well and that's what you're getting from the mix as well. It's not a fish meal mix, it's a cereal mix and that's why it's very popular on natural venues. I know lots and lots of people that use this kind of a mix in Ireland and in those sorts of venues and when it comes in you know um, three kilo bags as well if you are going around festivals that's why these are popular ground baits because you know you can get good value for money. So I'm just going to put that through the sieve and see what's left. Oh, there you go. Virtually nothing. I'm, I'm really surprised at that. But because it's uh, a mix that's based on hemp, or it's a hemp-based mix, I expected a lot more um, larger pieces of hemp to be left in that sieve. And as you can see, there isn't. If I just tip them into my hand, that is all what's left, which is very surprising. There is feed in there, but it's not large particles. The other bowl and mix that we used the other day, the Brazen one, has got a lot. You know. It, a lot more feed in it than this has but as you can see that's you know it's it's a lovely fine dark mix and that's all what's left from that okay so I'm gonna pop that in there and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix it up I'm gonna see if we can over wet it I'm gonna mix it once and as with every video in this series I'm gonna give it 20 minutes to ses settle to rest and then I'm gonna come back to it and we might need to add more water to it so let's just get mixing this up and let's have a look what kind of a mix it's gonna be like one of the things that can happen with, with dark mixers is that you'll see as you're mixing it, sometimes the actual black dye will come off onto your hands or you'll see it on the actual bowl itself. And that's something we're gonna, we'll see as we're mixing it. Okay, now I am mixing this by hand and it is a rectangular bowl, but I'm doing this because if I was to use a drill, that's not gonna give a true reflection on what the mix is like to most people because I know most people who watch these videos don't carry drills with them they don't mix up loads and loads of ground bait a lot of the time when we're feeder fishing certainly myself anyway you might only be using two pints of ground bait so I just don't carry a drill it's very very rare that I do that so there will be some lumps in here and that's because I'm mixing it by hand in a rectangular bowl the reason why I'm doing it in a rectangular bowl is just because it's better to film better for filming purposes for you so what I'm seeing already, we're getting some lumps in there, but that's inevitable anyway. And we always put mixers through a, through a sieve anyway. Well, the first thing that's coming to mind is there's no, there's a tiny bit of darkness coming off on the fingers. But look, if you look at the bowl, there's nothing coming off there. So none of the dye, you know, there isn't any dye or anything coming out of this. Sometimes you mix dark mixers in your ground bait bowl and it, all the ground bait bowl goes black, you know. So we're not getting that. So if that's a feature or something that you like, then that's good for you. I like it. I like to think that any darkness is retained in the mix. That's just me. That's why I've selected the mix. I'm getting a strong smell of crumb now. There is fine dark crumb in here and that's the smell that you're getting. But like I say, this is not a fish meal mix. As I mix that more, the crumb smell has come through a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to add any more to that. And that's because I want to leave some of it dry so we can do a nice dry explosive feeder test when we put this in the tank. As you can see, that's mixed up. It's kept all its color. There's not much feed in there. There's a little bit, but the feed that is in there is very fine. And as you can see, it's kept its darkness. The bowl is still green down there, so there's no blackness come off onto it. And there's no stickiness either. 
there's no stickiness there sometimes when you mix these mixers when they're oily and that sort of thing you can feel the stickiness on your fingers you, feel, you know you can see it caked to your fingers there's nothing there as you can see so I'm gonna give that exactly 20 minutes come back to it I'm gonna leave a portion off so that we can try it dry in the tank and then the other bit I'm gonna over wet slightly see if we can over wet it see if it is a mix you can over wet and I'm also gonna have a medium consistency that we can try in the tank and I will see how it performs underwater that has been exactly 20 minutes so as you'd expect the mix has dried out quite a bit you can still see the feed in there I put this through I roughly put it through a sieve you can put it through as fine a sieve as you wish if you want to sieve out all those feed particles then you can do that that's the kind of thing that you know we've done in other videos on my other channel patron TV which is more in depth the link is there if you want to have a look at that channel but I'm going to leave all the feed in here because this is how most people would use it okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the mix into two halves now one half here I'm going to keep dry so that's the nice dry side of the mix that I'm going to keep exactly how it is we're going to put that in the tank in the feeder so we can see how the dry feed works itself this bit here we're going to see if we can over wet it over wetting ground bait can be a way of fishing with this kind of a mix so let's have a look see if we can do it you can't really do it with most mixers but this will give us an idea if we can actually over wet it if I move the bowl over there for you and that's letting us over wet it which is great so you can feed you know I mean it is intended at roach fishing but and I know a lot of this channel is about feeder fishing it's not just feeder fishing you know there is pole fishing and other method getting featured more and more but this is a mix that's designed for all sorts of fishing not only feeder fishing so if you're fishing for roach up in the water you could feed sloppy balls of ground bait if you're fishing with a whip or on the pole and as you can see that over wets really nicely so that's allowing you to over wet it as well so it's a versatile mix it's targeting row it's for you know it's for targeting roach but as you can see you could do that on a pole or a feeder but that's allowing you to over wet it so if you want to feed this mix um, sloppy or over wet then that certainly is an option now what I'm also going to do with this portion here is I'm going to add a little bit more water to it I'm going to make this a little bit more um, a little bit more inert okay so that we can see how it performs next to the dry mix in the tank damper and more well inert is the right way you could mix it the night before mixing cereal mixes the night before is fine you know that it's not going to go off um, and sometimes when we're using cereal mixes even on festivals you could even roll your ground bait over to the following day so if you mix a mix like this up then you know if you've got any left over for the following day sometimes with cereal mixes certainly the ones I've used you can actually roll them over to the next day so you're not wasting as much ground bait so as you can see that's really quite inert now it's not over over wet but it's certainly deadened deadened that mix down a little bit I'll just show you those two side by side so you can see the difference okay so that's the one that's going to be more inert and that one we've kept dry so we can try and use it as like a like a more explosive type mix so let's get the feeders out whack them in the tank and let's see how they're going to perform underwater Right, well this is a feature to this series that I've never done before. So here we are, we've got two flatbed side weighted feeders, just cage feeders. Nice fine wire cage feeders, so that's going to allow the water to get to the ground bait really, really quickly and easily. Identical feeders, so I've never done this test before. So we're going to put one with, I'm just going to lightly squeeze some of the dry mix in, so we can see how that performs. Okay, medium pressure, I'm not going to pack it in either of them. And I'm not going to lightly squeeze it like I said before if you were going to cast that 45 50 meters then that would be enough pressure to keep that in okay but I haven't packed it in and in the other feeder we're going to be having the more um, the, the side of the mix that's had more water it's a little bit stickier but again I'm not going to pack it in too tight and we'll just see how these two are going to perform underwater they might perform the same we don't know so let's get these in the tank and hopefully I can pop these in the right place for you straight away so we pop that one in there and then that one in that's the dry one there we go and straight away you can see the dry one look at how much stuff's coming off that now I'm looking down at the tank from above there's bits of hemp coming off there and that is your explosive mix that is your explosive side of it the other one is gradually starting to break down a little bit but you can see the big difference there between the two the nearest one to us look how quick the feed is emptied now 
I'll show you a close up of the one on the right hand side in a moment just so you can see how it's breaking down that one. The other one is breaking down still quite quickly. If I move that camera over for you, as you can see that is emptying, but very, very slowly. Big difference between the two. Now interestingly, the first one, the dry explosive one, is kind of kind of done. That was, that was literally, what, 20, 30, 30 seconds after it hits in the bottom? That's a very open um, wire cage feeder, that one, so the water can get to that really, really quickly. If you were fishing in deeper water, um, and, and some of the venues like in Ireland, and some of these natural waters, you might not have a feeder on quite like that. You might have a more enc enclosed feeder, like a pl solid plastic feeder, or that sort of thing. So the water wouldn't have got to that ground bait quite as quick. But as you can see now, I mean, after 30 seconds, the dry the dry mix, mix had exploded. So it's showing you that you can use this mix in its dry state. And when you're fishing for roach and fish up in the water, and certainly initially just to get your peg going, then that dry mix can be the way to go because you've got lots of bits of particles coming up and down in the water, a bit of activity, and that can obviously can help draw fish into your peg or help draw them down or just let them know that your feed is where it is. Whereas the inert mix, as you can see, hardly anything's come off that and that's almost kind of just melting almost. Um, but it's still breaking down quite quickly. There's the odd bit of particle feed coming off both of them This kind of mix you've got an active um, a, An explosive style of using it or a way of using it But you can also deaden it down as well, but really really interesting as you can see There's not much dye coming off it or anything like that. And I mean that's basically It's just it's just there now. You know everything's just resting on the bottom. There's hardly anything coming off it So all I'm gonna do now. I know we're doing this with two feeders so we're probably going to get a little bit of uh, extra activity. But what I'll do is I'm going to move the, I'm going to take the inert one out of the tank just so we can see what gets kicked up and just have a look at how quick all the particles settle as well. So I'm just going to whip that straight out. Look at that lovely black cloud. Look at that. You see, just by remote taking the feeder out of the peg, you're again stirring the peg up, you know, with a mix like this, as you can see how it's clouded up the water. Obviously this is a tank, it's not a natural open reservoir or anything like that, where a lot of that would be getting taken out of the peg through the toe and that sort of thing. But as you can see, compared to some of the other mixes that we've looked at in, in other ranges, that has really coloured up the water quite a lot. All the particles are down on the bottom now, but it has left quite a bit of, of cloud there. So, it, you know, that's one of the things that we sometimes want in feeder fishing. You cast your feeder out, you've got that initial feeder going in, you've got that initial burst of ground bait, or if it is a, an active mix, or that scent of ground bait going in. And then when you retrieve the feeder, you get in a, another um, explosion, if you want to call it that, of activity in the peg as well. So that's really coloured up nicely. But yeah, I like the look of that mix. And like I say, you know, there isn't any sort of dark or black haze coming off it. There's no sign of any dye coming off it. And even if I show you that, even in the bowl itself, look, that's, I mean, that's the corner where we overwetted it. There's nothing on the bowl. None of that black residue or dye has come out at all, which I think is great to see. So how do you get hold of this ground mate? Well, there are quite a few ground mates in this range. I've got a printout there and I will be going through some of these mixers for you. So I don't want to show you all these. But these mixers you can get direct from the rep for England. His name is David Watts. His phone number and his details are just there for you. They don't have actually have an online as regards online presence as regards website for the UK. He does a lot of his online stuff through the Facebook page, which is Boland. Let me just get this right for you. It's Boland England Ground Baits. That's on Facebook, so if you add that page or like that page, you will be able to see lots of testimonials and, and just testaments from people who have used these mixers in the past. And that is also an avenue for ordering the ground baits. Other than that, you can just give Dave a call and he will get them shipped out to you. Now, as regards the price, now this is part of the issue why I think because it's obviously a quality ground bait, the price is very, very reasonable. Now, for a three kilo bag, it's actually £5.50. So that works out at just under £1.84 per kilo. And if you're going to compare that to some of the other ground baits that you might be taking on festivals or any of these competitions where you know you're using a lot of ground bait, you might be balling it in, then this is obviously to me is why it's so popular because of the value for money. So another really interesting mix from the Boland range. So 
I hope you've enjoyed this insight. Please give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see more of them. If you want to see more coaching tuition style videos, more in-depth videos like what we've just been doing here, then have a look at my other channel, Patreon TV, at the link just there. So thanks for watching, and I really, really look forward to seeing you all in the next video.